My name is Anne Hallward, and this is Safe Space Radio, the show about the subjects we would struggle with less if we talked about them more. Here are some highlights from my conversation with Dartmouth professor Susan Bryson about her recovery from rape. She's the author of the book Aftermath, Violence and the Remaking of a Self. As you say, it was over 20 years ago, but it's still sometimes hard for me to talk about it. So I'm going to just start by reading. I'll be able to get the story out more quickly that way. I went for a walk along a peaceful-looking country road, and it was a gorgeous day. About an hour and a half later, I had been grabbed from behind, pulled into the bushes, beaten, and sexually assaulted, feeling absolutely helpless and entirely at my assailant's mercy. Do you feel pressure to tell it quickly? I'm struck at how often people feel like they have to keep their story. They have to censor it. They have to make it short or brief or not too emotional. All the ways that people try to make their story palatable to be heard. We need to learn how to listen. Events that we call unspeakable aren't really unspeakable. It's that they're very, very painful to listen to. I do feel a need to bear witness, to give my testimony about what I see as a very pervasive problem of gender-based violence against women. I need to tell that story. I dealt with a lot of depression. I found it more motivating to feel anger than to feel rage rather than depression. So seeing this is not something, just something that happened to me, but as a, a, a very large global problem um, enabled me to, to do something with that anger. I think if one stays in that place of blaming oneself um, and doesn't put the blame where it belongs on the assailant and on the society that created the assailant, uh, then that can be very dangerous. One of the things that you write about so powerfully in your book is um, the ways in which uh, people kind of encouraged you to forget. There were so many, especially in the early months, and that really convinced me that I needed to write something and to speak out very publicly about this. Because also the other rape survivors I spoke with, the women in this group that I was part of, had the same experience that other people were either denying what had happened to them or diminishing the importance or saying it's time to fuck up and move on, get over it. I am persuaded that one does need to confront and work through the trauma, that it just doesn't work to try to push it aside and pretend that nothing happened. Even after I was rescued and taken in an ambulance to the hospital, I was in the ambulance thinking, if I survive this, it's going to change my life. I'm going to do something, whatever I can, to help to stop this happening to other women. Susan participated in individual therapy, a survivor's group, a self-defense course, and shared her story with many through her book. You can listen to our conversation in its entirety by going to this link. Also, if you have suffered a sexual assault, here are some resources for you below. <laughs> 